Hi, this is Joe Walensky from the Convey UX Conference. Uh, I'm the program manager for our event that's coming up in Seattle next month, talking with some of the speakers who will be at the event. Today I'm talking with Len Peralta. Hello, Len. How you doing, Joe? It's, uh, it's good to see you. It's kind of a misnomer because I'm not actually a speaker, uh, but I will be there and, uh, and I will be part of the festivities. So. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to tell us a little bit, talk a little bit about the things you'll be doing there. Uh, where are you uh, talking to us from today? I'm talking to you from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, lovely frozen Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> well, uh, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the type of work that you're involved in? Sure thing. Well, I'm an artist. Uh, I'm an illustrator and a graphic designer, but I've been doing a lot of illustration lately, um, and that's kind of how I got involved with Convey UX. Um, I uh, I think you saw me through uh, Tom's uh, Tom Merritt's Daily Tech News Show. I am the resident uh, 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 artist, <laughs> silly for a tech show, but I, every Friday I, I show up and I illustrate uh, uh, an image or a, a story. Um, uh, right there within the half hour uh, it's it's quick and it's sort of interesting and then and then I it's just you know it's just something that's if you're if you're listening to the podcast it gives you something else to kind of go look at um, and so that's that's been sort of interesting so uh, I'm doing something similar to that at uh, at convey UX uh, where uh, speakers will be uh, giving their presentations and I will be kind of surreptitiously over to the corner uh, drawing uh, 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 interpretations of what they're talking about, and uh, and it's 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 interesting because sometimes I don't actually know where things are going to go, uh, so some of the drawings uh, you, you have to have a deeper context. You have to actually understand what what was talking about, but hopefully um, uh, the the images kind of stand on their own too and and make for interesting. Uh, Art at the very least. So yeah, your images from uh, this past year were great, uh, and uh, those are still available to uh, be viewed. Um, you're also uh, well. The majority of your work is uh, working with your uh, comic books, I think, and and projects like that. What kind of things uh, have you done in in the past, and what are you working on now? Oh yeah, well I've. Um... I'm I'm working on a lot I, I'm working on a lot more comic books these these days. I'm kind of bouncing between two comic books right now. Uh, I started a uh, uh, a series, a five part series with uh, uh, guys, uh, two guys, uh, Mike Newman, who is uh, the creator, uh, one of the writers of Borderlands, the video game, and Chris Straub, uh, who is uh, actually a Seattleite, who is a web comic artist, uh, in uh, uh, who does Brood Hollow, and we created something called Exterminate. And uh, we released issue one in October uh, on my birthday, and uh, we're we're currently working on issue two. Uh, along with that, I'm also working on another uh, another comic book called uh, We Are the Depacement, which is about a Japanese rock band, which is very strange. So, two different things, definitely. Uh, Exterminate's a little bit more kind of funny, scary. Depacement is is about rock and roll. So, along with that, I'm just doing a lot of different. Uh, uh, you know we're we're knee deep in the holiday season here, so I'm doing a lot of uh, a lot of commissions, uh, custom things, uh, and um, you know just I'm drawn every day, so that's a good thing. <laughs> it you, keeps me busy. So. You mentioned to me that uh, you've converted almost all of your drawing to uh, straight digital. So uh, what what's that been like? What kinds of uh, tools do you use for that? Sure. Yeah. Well, um, my uh, I, I originally was an analog uh, artist. I would sit at my drawing table and I would draw with pen, actual pens and paper and things like that. And then baby steps from there, I started um, taking that art and scanning it in and then painting it uh, uh, online. Uh, and so about two years ago, I decided to go 100% digital where I would take, uh, I would create the pens that I would hold in my hand inside of my computer uh, in Photoshop. And so right now I work on a huge 22-inch uh, 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 Cintiq, which is in front of me here. You probably can't see it. Actually, I can probably do this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you can don't see that break or not. It. <laughs> it's, it's big. I mean, my arms, you can kind of see, are, are, are kind of uh, covering this. But I, I, uh, I use a, a stylus. This is my one pen, and I, and I, and I draw everything 100% digitally. Um, there are some, uh, obviously, some, uh, 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 some pros with that. 
in that there are things I can do digitally that I could never ever do in real life. Uh, my son, who is 15, is a he paints uh, real paint, and uh, and I I can't do what he does, but. The digital world allows me to do uh, that uh, in a way that I feel a little more comfortable doing. Um, uh, and then there's also cons to it. Uh, you know, um, sometimes uh, the pens that I use uh, do some really cool things, and there's more uh, there's more of an organic feel to it as opposed to the synthetic feel that I have to kind of create in the digital world. So there are some uh, there are some trade backs. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, trade offs I should say back and forth, but. Uh, uh, but overall, uh, I, I, I am 100% digital and, and try to keep it uh, try to keep it uh, uh, environment friendly as well uh, by by not using as much paper and, and and not using as many pens. Although my my drawing table doesn't really show that. There's a lot of stuff on it right now. So. Well, I, I wanted to ask you about your interpretations uh, that uh, that you do of the of the uh, presentations. And I was just wondering if. Uh, you might be able to kind of just break down a little bit, you know, what's going through your head as, okay, speakers introduced, they start doing their presentation, this is going to go on for 45 minutes, so what? what's your process of, of identifying what then ends up as the your interpretive representation of that session? Well, sure. Um, uh, I like to give the illusion that it is something that is created right there then and there and for the most part it is um, like I said there's there's a lot of improv going on and uh, but I like to I like to talk to the speakers that I'm gonna be paired up with um, initially just to kind of get a feel for where they're going um, sometimes I get good feedback and sometimes I, I, I do the feedbacks a little bit more like they don't even know where they're going at that point yet um, so which is actually more fun because uh, because I have to kind of latch on early to something that they're going to try to do, uh, or try to try to convey, and um, and draw from there. So uh, uh, I do like to walk in with a little bit of knowledge of uh, of what I'm going to be doing. Sometimes I don't have the benefit of doing that, so I, I have to just kind of improv it. Um, but I find I find that it's you know I did one last year which was really fun. It was I, I think it was about. Uh, rocks or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, it was uh, one of the speakers who was, was talking about uh, was talking about rocks and, uh, and and from that I just had to go with it and I just had to draw whatever it was that she was talking about um, and it was just kind of a cool it was a cool little image, you know, and uh, it, 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 it was it, it was an interesting image because it not it didn't necessarily have a whole lot to do with the talk necessarily. Uh, but if you were at the talk, you knew what was what it was about. You knew what I was trying to convey, and um, it's uh, it'll be interesting. This year, it is going to be a little bit different uh, in that um, I am going to actually be recording the uh, 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 the images through me drawing the images through Google Hangout, um, so people could actually uh, you know participate in that way. Uh, uh, without necessarily getting in the way of the speaker, that's the that's the hard part. Is that um, uh, you know I can be I can almost be a distraction to what the actual speaker is talking about, and I don't want that to happen because um, there's some really good information coming out there. And so uh, the fact that people on their own can then log in and watch uh, watch me create if they if they care, just sort of as a, as a side thing. Is just a, another really cool way of uh, of taking content and putting it out there uh, and and participating in it. And I, I love that part of it. Um, I don't necessarily need the, the spotlight on me, but if you want to find out what I'm doing, you can watch it. I think this is going to be really really cool. It's going to be a great a great opportunity. Well, uh, yeah, I'm excited to uh, have you involved again for uh, the second time. And uh, so thanks for taking a few minutes to talk about this stuff. Uh, and I'll. See you in a few weeks in Seattle. Absolutely. I can't wait. I love Seattle. Thank you. All right, thanks, Lynn.